Turning now to politics, later today, former House Speaker Newt Gingrich will announce his intention to form an exploratory committee for a 2012 presidential race. He would be the first of many big-name Republicans expected to challenge President Obama. Joining us in Washington now is CBS News political analyst John Dickerson. John, good morning. Good morning, Chris. So former Speaker Gingrich is the first big name to really kind of dip his, uh, dip his toe into the pool here. Does he excite the GOP as a candidate? And let me ask you, who does he, who does he really appeal to? Well, here we go. He does excite the Republican base, not like somebody like Sarah Palin, but what Gingrich has that Palin doesn't have is a long record of fighting in the arena. He fought for a balanced budget. He worked in the, in the vineyards when Republicans were out of control for a long time, building the majority. So he will run on that idea of competence. And also in the Republican Party right now, sticking to your principles in the middle of a fight is a big deal. And Gingrich can say, I did that for a long time in Washington. Okay, so he'll excite some. But let's talk about the baggage that he brings with him as well, from the government shutdowns back in the 90s to being forced out as speaker to the fact that he's on his third marriage, which is probably going to alienate some social conservatives. What are some of his big negatives? Well, some of that baggage, they're trophies. He can say, I fought for these principles harder than anyone else. But as you say, the personal baggage is considerable. He's not only had multiple marriages, but he is an admitted adulterer. That matters in Republican primaries where religious voters care about that kind of thing. And also in a general election, married women are a key swing voting block. He has said publicly, I have sinned, and he has sought redemption. And his hope is that the American people are so serious this time around that the problems the country faces are so big that people will judge him on his ideas and not his indiscretions. All right, let's discuss some of the other candidates that the, uh, the GOP potentially have out there. We've got a graphic I want to show you right here. We've got some percentages as well. Mike Huckabee is out there. Mitt Romney, of course, is there. Sarah Palin, the aforementioned Newt Gingrich. Um, the Iowa caucuses, less than a year out, but, but no one has really kind of stepped up and fully committed. And all we're getting from, from former Speaker Gingrich is really just kind of a, an exploratory committee, an intention. So why is everybody sitting back? In 2008, pretty much all the candidates were on the field. John McCain was the only one who had not announced, and it was obvious he was going to run. The reason they've waited in this case is that, in some cases, they're very well known. The candidates don't have to get, out, get their name out, uh, so they don't need to campaign to introduce themselves to people. In other cases, people like Mike Huckabee have uh, television contracts. They would give up money and a platform if they decided to run. But also in politics now, it's not like it used to be. Candidates used to think that you got out there, you raised money, you put your name out there, and you built a big sort of sense of inevitability. Well, that didn't work for Hillary Clinton. It didn't really work for John McCain in 2008. It almost didn't work for George Bush in 2000. The field is strewn with candidates like Lamar Alexander and Phil Graham, who tried to create the sense of inevitability. And basically, showing up first meant you failed first. So there is a theory now that you wait. And that's what all of these candidates have done so far. All right. Final question for you. Facing an incumbent is tough enough. Can any of these candidates, should they emerge, do you think that they can financially compete with President Obama, whose war chest is expected to be anywhere from $750 million to potentially a billion dollars as he moves forward? It will be very, very difficult. Obama has the incumbency. He also, as you point out, had a very, uh, he has a very strong uh, fundraising operation from the last time around. There has been some worry in the Democratic base about his policies, but what's happening now is a lot of those liberals are newly excited by the Republicans in Washington, what they're planning to do, and also some of these efforts in the states. So to the extent that the Democratic base was depressed at all about Obama's performance, they are now newly energized by the Republicans. And so it's not so much about Barack Obama anymore. It'll be very hard to match him on the fundraising front. All right. John Dickerson in Washington for us this morning. John, good to talk with you. Thanks, Chris. Talk soon.